show, folks, and I'm not on mute, and I got Zach with me, <laughs> and we're live, and I forgot to turn my light on. So here we go. Now I'm now I'm in full color. How's everyone doing, folks? We're going live, episode 45 of the USFL podcast. I'm the ref representing USFL Newsroom, the number one source in USFL news. And I'm joined, as always, by my man, Zach Kyleman. How you doing today, my friend? Audio test on the fly. <laughs> I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. Hope that everyone's hearing this. Um, and yeah, welcome to the emergency episode 45, because we were not expecting anything whatsoever. But here we are uh, later than usual, because we weren't expecting to post a show today. Um but hey, you know, the USFL waits for no man or football <laughs> personality. Um, and boy, do we have a doozy to break down. It's definitely going to take a full episode to kind of talk about all this. Well, and here's what I need from you guys, chat. A couple things. One, is our audio even-ish? I hope so. D Ducky does hear it, so that is that is good. That's I've good. I've gotten a confirmation from him on that. That's what I like. Number two, we got a couple things you guys need to do. Social media, what the flip are you doing at USFL Podcast, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. One day we'll get on the TikTok. Make sure you're following it for all the latest news. That's how you find out when we're live, just like now, because this is, I mean, just last minute, last second. That's how we roll. No mm -hmm. curtains, Zach. I woke up at like 11 o'clock this morning. <laughs> I had like a million text messages. You. Oh, I had, you. I had... I was like, what is going on? I'm like groggy, waking up. You message me. Jake message me. James message me. I had text messages up the wazoo. And now we're here live just uh, <laughs> two and a half hours later. This is how we do it. Now, here, here's the thing, too. YouTube, we're on YouTube right now. We might have an audio version of this later. If mm -hmm. you're on YouTube, I know you're on YouTube right now. Here's a couple things you need to do. Click the like button. And you know what the like button does? It, it helps YouTube show other people that this show might actually be worth watching. Whether that's true or not, hit the button, get signed up. And since we're here, click the subscribe button if you haven't already. And click the bell. It builds morale. Mm -hmm. It builds all sorts of morale. And I mean, as a Panthers fan... You're either feeling really good, you're feeling bad, maybe you need a little bit of morale, spruce it up, throw a little bit on there. And while you're getting some morale, get yourself a discount over at Breaking Tea using coupon code USFL Newsroom for 10% all of your orders. Now, it could be USFL gear, it could be any gear, really. You can use that coupon code on everything. Now, if you want to see just the USFL stuff, you can just go to breakingtea.com slash USFL Newsroom, scoop 10% off. Sign us up as well because it helps us do some operating in the background. Now, Zach, this is a drop. This is a secret drop that you don't even know about yet. Okay. But if you go over to our site or even down below in the, uh, in the description, we have a link to the USFL podcast shop. Brand new item on the shop today. Now, you know me, Zach. I like my hats. It holds my thoughts in. It, and today, I mean, I need to hold in my thoughts in the most. We have a brand new spring stock hat in the shop Ooh. on the front. Full color, Zach. Not one of these one color shing shang bing bangs. Full color spring stock logo on the front. On the back, it's got the USFL podcast logo, too. I will say it's 30 bucks, but that, don't blame us. Blame the distributor. But at least you get full color and a logo on the back. And we really mm -hmm. don't make jack off the hats we don't make anything <laughs> off of the merchandise at all really we try to keep it you know as low as possible so if you want a spring stock hat mm -hmm. if you plan on showing up to spring stock which details are coming soon Very you soon. might want to score that hat because it's probably going to take a couple weeks to ship and uh hey <laughs> i can't wait to talk about <laughs> spring stock now here's one thing that you can Probably figure out about spring stock. Well, we know Canton's not week one. We know Detroit's not week one. That leaves it down to two. Birmingham or Memphis. The party's in the pub or the boat bash. We'll keep you apprised. Maybe both. I don't know. But, Zach, I mean, we did all the, sh the schmas here. This is the big news. Yes. Mike Nolan, Jeff Fisher, right? So, Jeff Fisher, again, waking up in a daze. 
this was not the day to sleep in because my head is racing of what is going on. Now, thank goodness for James Larson of the newsroom crew. Cause one of those many messages was, I assume you're sleeping. I'm going to knock out an article right now. <laughs> what, what a pro. What, what a, a champ pro. right there. Sign up James Larson and the whole newsroom crew. Zach, I mean, you're the Panthers guy. You're the Panthers fan. We got to hear it from you first. Good, bad, ugly. How are you feeling on this one? You know, I'm going to, I had, I've had talks with other Panthers fans on our discord, uh, specifically me and uh, of course, Jake ball, who's in the chat right now, of course, along with others like Bill Alexander and company that are fans of the show, but me and Jake, you know, along, along with, uh, along with a few other people in that discord, we are the Panthers kind of united and I think it's really just right now we're still trying to process the fact that uh, this came out of what seems out of nowhere and that, you know, we have we have Mike Nolan now coming in um, very, I think, kind of a mixed emotion um, to me. If you're wanting to, I guess the the other team, I guess, that was debated on another coaching change as much as I didn't say that I agree with that as long as Fisher comes back is the Panthers. Uh, that being said, Mike Nolan coming out. Um, very unique character, a lot of NFL experience, but a lot of experience. I think NFL fans have dinged at some time in his career. We'll dive a little more into that. Um, but that's the preliminary before mm. we do like each person. I, I, I really feel like Jeff Fisher himself deserves at least his own full breakdown of just stepping away um, before we then talk about Mike Nolan. But real, th real talk, I'm still processing this. I'm still shocked mm -hmm. that this is coming out and so late into the cycle to keep this in mind. It's early February. There is a draft coming this month, later in the month. So they got it. They got him in the building. He's going to be analyzing talent and we're still waiting on some staff uh, ideas. If there's mm -hmm. any changes, I don't know if there will be hard to say, but the late cycle change, that's what surprises me besides the fact that Fisher is stepping down as well mm -hmm. at this time. Well, I, yeah, you know, this late in the game, it's never perfect, but I will say it could be worse, right? The things I'm happy about, well, I'm not, I don't want to say happy, but the things that don't concern me, right? They're the things that I look at as a positive. This happened before the draft. Uh, I assume with this news coming out today, this wasn't something that just happened. Yeah. Right. Now, let's just take uh, take a trip in the time machine to last week. Uh, was it last week? Yeah, last week when we had the mm -hmm. press conference in Detroit, Jeff Fisher wasn't there. So I assume those conversations probably had been going on for a while. If we look at the, you know, the reasons why he's not moving over, well, it's a little bit further from his family. He's in Tennessee. Now the hub's actually in Detroit. You know, so that was one of the things that worked out for him pretty well in season one is Tennessee, Birmingham, not too far away. If only they could have just traded the coaches, you know, maybe send uh, Fisher to the Memphis showboats. Things could have worked out a little bit differently. Uh, I'm sure Haley might have something to say <laughs> about coaches that as well. Coaches but, trades, huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's not out of the realm. We kind of just saw it happen in the NFL with the Broncos. And uh, you know what? For the folks to say that doesn't relate to this show, Sean Payton, right? Uh I don't know how that relates to the show. Anyway, no, well, coaches just trades. trades. That's what you're doing. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I knew there was you, something you in there. You just, <laughs> you're close. <laughs> oh, no, boy. I, I see what you do. Uh, I will say one thing um, that I think is telling of Jeff Fisher. Now, let's just dive into Jeff Fisher while we're at mm -hmm. it. Main thing, Jeff Fisher stepping down. So they did drop the press release pretty much right as they dropped in on social. It was kind of like really bang, bang this morning. Mm -hmm. Uh, Tony Paul for the Detroit News, who, by the way, I'll let you know, we do have an interview with him dropping later this weekend. We'll give you more details at the end. Um, he was the one that first broke that. And then, you know, everything else just kind of fell into place all of a sudden within like an hour's time frame. Uh, something that I will that I had to bring up is that, you know, Fisher, um, I think so. I think you saw some people. They love Fisher in here. There's I've seen a lot of comments about, you know, wondering if maybe he wasn't fully committed, but. You know, I think Jake Ball, I brought up this great point in our chat right now that, you know, players did appreciate him. Keep in mind that the NFLPA Bowl, something that was uh, highly publicized on there, at least that when they were doing interview discussions for the lead up to that game, uh, the Panthers, the team itself, they actually chipped in to give him new Jordans um, as like a gift for like, thank you for the season 
type of deal and what he's done. Mm -hmm. You know, keep in mind, this guy, Jeff Fisher's like a laid back, chill dude at this point in his career. Like his, his comment on coming back to the NFL was if they let him wear flip flops yeah. <laughs> in the team offices. So, you know, I, I think I think as that was displayed, you know, the, the team appreciates him a ton. So this is probably a shock to them. And, you know, there's rumors that, you know, they're they might have not known about this possible change too. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a lot to go in process. We're, we're still deep getting some of the details. It's hard to say, but you know, when you have your head coach change over this quick, this much in such a short time, you know, he's got to get in, he's got to prove to his guys that we're going to keep this process going in the direction we've been building in so far. Mm -hmm. And same page with say, for example, Steve Kayser and company in terms of what they're building in terms of a roster makeup. Well, in you know the you you bring up the big thing. We talked about the draft. You just mentioned the roster breakup uh, makeup. Really, I mean, this guy's got a huge opportunity ahead of him, right? He's really being gifted, probably one of the prime spots in the USFL for season two, right? He's getting to come in to run a team with the first pick in each round of the draft, right? Uh, I mean, if there's any time, if there was any time to come in as a coach of any team. This would be it, right? You know, in the NFL, you get the first pick in the draft, right? That's a pretty nice pick. The but the first round in each <laughs> in each round where not snake style, you're legit getting potentially the best of the best, you mm -hmm. know, and that's, you know, it that and when I say the best of the best, that's all subjective too because I think there is an aspect of, you know, the the personalities of the coaches come through into their rosters. Um, now let's look at the, the other things he's also adopting some pretty solid players from last year's team, right? Reggie Corbin he is coming back, right? That's a huge part of that team. So he has some things to build upon. He, I mean, he's probably got a lot of footage he needs to catch up on. Uh, I'm curious what the chat is feeling on this pickup. I have not, I'll be honest, Zach. I have not had really a chance to soak in how social media is feeling. I feel like it's a mix, but I would assume, I would assume there's probably some happy campers out there. Let's, you know, I like Jeff Fisher. I thought I really liked the fact that he was laid back. When we look back at United by football and some of his spots on there with, dude, I'm, well, one, that dude knows how to train a dog. <laughs> yes. He doesn't know how to train a I, panther, I, I, but he honest, knows how to train a dog. I almost forgot about the clip at his house where they are kind of showing off, off they're showing his dogs and here going play and fetch and <laughs> all that. That that was that was that was nice. I mean, yeah, like Jeff look, Jeff's Jeff's a personality. You know, I think that's something that the league has been appreciative of is that, you know, and this is kind of mentioned in the press release too, that you know, his big status as a as a NFL ball, ball coach, you know, being a AFC champion, him being a Super Bowl leading team coach, you know, in that 1999 run, but also just having a success in those years in the NFL, you know, that prestige helped with the league getting, I think, eyeballs off the ground. It also helped with the market for Michigan, I think, getting as much interest as it did off the gate to where they can justify – Saying, hey, their interest was here. We can go to Detroit. You know, mm -hmm. let's look at that. You know, mm -hmm. if the, you know, if the team's looking at that, at that market and saying, hey, the fan base came out because of this. You know that that is a crucial thing. Yes, there was the wins were not there. He only got two wins. They were both against the Maulers. Uh, credit that does set them up, of course, for a first round draft pick. So Mike Nolan is very happy to get that, no matter what the case is, mm -hmm. uh, first overall. But, you know. His impact on the league is in the sense of I brought eyeballs to at least help with some attraction online. And I brought eyeballs to the market that I'm going to, to where they could justify that move now. That mm -hmm. hub, you know, it still is likely, there's still a chance it could exist next, this year without him. But you have to put a point that his status brings in social attention and brings in the merch sales of mm -hmm. sorts to where they can say, yeah, now we can more confidently talk with the officials out there in Detroit and Eastern Michigan mm -hmm. in that sense. Right. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm just glad we have a replacement right away, similar to what we did with the Maulers, right? Because mm -hmm. again, we, we talked about this with the Ray Horton situation. The one thing that you really don't want this late in the game, well, one, you'd probably don't want to be switching coaches, but right. what you really don't want late in the game is kind of what we have with the breakers where the announcement's coming. 
Nobody wants that, right? There's already yeah. kind of like some itching and scratching on who's who's the defensive coordinator going to be. And now I'll say with this news, maybe this is probably why, probably why that the defensive coordinator role either wasn't filled or hasn't been announced yet is because, well, from my understanding, Nolan's got a little bit of a defensive background here. So maybe he kind of serves uh, that role. Just, just a little, just, just a, a little defensive background. No big deal. Well, and <laughs> one thing that we've seen with the USFL is shared coaching duties. Right. And so now this is starting to make a little bit more sense. Maybe he does fill that role. And if, if he does, it would make sense to get the, the new head coach to come in to fill that role rather than have, you know, somebody that's on his way out to fill that role. But to me, mm-hmm. this feels like it's going to be one of those shared situations. Now, maybe that's what the Panthers need is a little bit of defense in their life because I am a big proponent of defense. I've said this in the discord before defense is the best offense And so if he can really tighten things up on the defensive end, make the pants and not that they weren't lacking last year, but I mean, the less points you give up, the less likely you're going to lose. Let's be honest here. There were some struggles pass rush for the Panthers last season. I was lacking at times. um, And in the later end of the year, they were giving up definitely gashes in the run game to where that is a concern. So, you know, when we talk about, you know, Mike Nolan Mm -hmm. defensive setup. That is something that he'll bring as an asset right away. I, I, again, I know uh, some folks will stress that his time in the NFL with his own stints as a coordinator, mixed results. I get Mm -hmm. that. Um, He's had some time away. I think this is to me, his for a restart. It's a good place to restart. A lot of coaches like in his situation, he has had some time to reevaluate it's been three years since he was with the Dallas Cowboys, by the way. Mm-hmm. And so that's a bit of time to kind of reassess some things. Look at how the game's changed as much as uh, like Jeff Fisher, who was away even longer. And uh, he will he has said when he came in, you know, he had time to reevaluate how the football landscapes adapted and he was ready to get back into it at that time. Nolan, it's got to be something similar now. So there's a bunch on that plate defensively for the Panthers that I think they can process. And, you know, like I think some several Panthers fans have said, including a few in our own chat, you know, they've done a lot to boost some of the issues with that setup. You know, Mm -hmm. uh, I say the defensive line, I think is in a much better position this year. Uh, Secondary wise, there should be increased play in my opinion with the Panthers defense. So that unit hopefully should take a boost come this season. Um, Having someone like Nolan in there does help that as well. So, yeah, I'm. I'm over. That part has me fascinated because they needed that boost no matter what mm-hmm. uh, coming into the se- into season two. Hundred percent. Now I will say this is a fascinating opportunity for whoever gets hired as the social media person in Detroit. Now I'm going to make a couple suggestions. Not. I mean, I may, I may not have put my hat in the ring. I know Zach, you have as well. So maybe you get mm. the spot. Here's what you should do. You get the job. You get to Detroit. You need to take Mike Nolan. On the greatest field trip of Michigan that anybody could ever have. I mean, oh, first here off, here we you go. start them, you take them up north a little bit, a little bit north of Detroit to a little city called Frankenmuth. Now, you don't go big right away. You don't go for the chicken dinner right away. You got to earn the hunger. So first off, you start at Bronner's. <laughs> Bronner's Christmas Village, the world's largest Christmas store. Yes. Get them in the spirit. Maybe buy a couple ornaments. Santa's there year round. And I know what Mike Nolan can ask for for Christmas. And that's a USFL championship. Bring another championship (laughs) to the city of Detroit, the state of Michigan. Because let's be honest here, Zach. It's been a long time. It's been a long, long time. The last guys to do it were these Michigan Panthers. Maybe they can do it again. And, and let's and let's remind everybody with their hub mates. The last time a Michigan team won a championship was against the Philadelphia Stars in 1983. And now they're hub mates. But OK, you go to Bronner's Christmas Village. You check it out again. Hold off on the chicken. There's a couple things you can do because there's Zender's Cheese House. Zach, do you know anything about what I'm talking about? Have you been uh, to Zender's Cheese House? I've been to Bronner's. House? I know what Zender's Cheese House is. They got a big piece of cheese with a mouse hanging out front. You mm-hmm. won't miss it. But they got little samples of cheese, Zach, and I am cheap. And so that's always, okay, you got to get a little bit of appetizer. Again, don't go for the chicken dinner yet because below Bronner's, or be- below Bl- Bronner's, below Zender's, <laughs> There's all sorts of shops. Now, depending on what time of year you go, it might be chilly. 
If it's warm, take a little bit of a ho- horse ride. And here's what you need to do. Do your little bit of shopping, but at the top of the hour, you need to head outside of Zenders because they got, I think, the world's largest cuckoo clock. I've heard of that, too. Where they have yes. like a little storytelling that happens through the clock. Do all that. Now you should be hungry. Now your appetite should be rolling. You head into Zenders. You get the chicken dinner. And don't skip out. Get the liver pate. It might see, ugh, it might seem a little weird, but the liver pate, I think it comes with the chicken dinner. They're going to put you it are, on your table anyway. You are really giving people joining this right now a question about about how this is going well and that's that's just day one because then day two okay now you're now you filled up your belly you got a little bit of taste of what michigan food's about okay on your way out of frankenmuth there's a place called tony's it's across the street from i believe the birch run uh fashion outlet all right and zach you need to look this place up tony sells blts with like, I think it's like two pounds of bacon on it. They're known for their bacon. Everything comes with like at least a pound or two of bacon. It's ridiculous. It's a heart attack, but you got to go there at least once. Now you get the footage from those days. You're full. You got a morning meal full of Tony's. Now you head to Detroit because there's a couple things right there. You got the fist. You got the spirit of Detroit. You take them down to the Fago factory. You go pick up some better made chips and then you cap it all <laughs> off by running the bases at old tiger stadium. You know what? They knocked down the stadium, but the bases are still there. And then you wrap it up at Ford field and you get ready for a winning season. So whoever takes that social media job, I'm telling you, I'm, I, I, if you need any tips, I will tell you where every good place to eat in Detroit is. That maybe that's about it. I know where all the good food places well, are. <laughs> well, Mike, Mike Nolan certainly is going to get that that shtick. Uh, just for re- record, Mike, Mike is uh, Mike has been a he is a Baltimore born born kid. Um, so we need and, to show him real chili then. Yeah, I'm just yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna he he's gonna be out. Now credit, keep in mind he is uh, he is definitely in his time coached out in Detroit. So he, one thing he is very familiar with. The as he it, we'll actually read, read this off in one of the press release quotes, like we always do. Um, very familiar with the Detroit crowds, as it's been stated, you know. And again, I agree there. It's a, it, you have to be a diehard to be a fan out in in that section of the state for that football team out there for the Lions and for Panthers fans. That's already been showing too, so they're going to need someone like that. Um, something I noticed that was brought up with the announcement, by the way, um, with Mike Nolan. So. Mm-hmm. You know, we know, of course, his background is DC. Now, his, his head coaching days, this was like something I had completely forgotten. It was like out of my collective brain in terms of the things I remember about Mike Nolan as a head coach. Uh, dude used to dress in some games in a three piece suit, which mm-hmm. seems weird today, but that was a normal thing for coaches to do, like in the earlier days of the NFL. And really, the last one to truly do it before him was uh, Tom Landry. Mm-hmm. With the well, Dallas Cowboys, a uh, little known, little bit of a fact on this, by the way. So he actually had to fight for permission from the NFL to wear a three-piece suit out on the field back at the time. The NFL changed its rules on the policy hmm. to where coaches could be allowed to wear a full suit for two home games a season if they wanted. Can I say bring it back? I want three-piece suit. You know what? <laughs> Maybe even grow well, a I little curly Q funny. mustache. I, I don't think anyone truly knows what the coach uniform policy is on the sideline, but I mean, look, if you want, you want the social clicks, like that, that's what people have been bringing up in mm-hmm. some of the things I've noticed with like repeat comments is they, they went, Oh yeah, that's, that's right. He used to wear, he used to wear a suit. He was like the classy guy on the sideline <laughs> back in San Francisco. I remember now, or there's also been Dallas fans that have brought up their disdain. I will leave it at that. You well, can look you that know, up, but nonetheless. That's what they get for being a Dallas fan. Can I say that? <laughs> you have an opinion. I said it. Whatever. You have an opinion. That's I, fine. I, you know what? The Houston Tekken, Tek, Tekkens. The, shit, Tekkens. They'd probably be better if they were Houston, Houston Tekkens. Tekkens. <laughs> the Houston Texans are my local team. They're not my team, so I'm not much to talk. But, uh, I mean, I think I share 
I think the opinion is shared. Cowboys fans, they're fun to make fun of. Somehow they became more fun to make fun of than Lions fans. I think people just feel bad for us Lions fans dude, at my, this point. Dude, I, my buddy uh, Tony Stanielson's going to love him to death. He's a, He lives out in Cleveland. He is a Cowboys fan for life. Dude is going to jump on here if he watches this show. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I just I know I'm getting a message from him. And I shared something on Facebook, of course, about this, which he interacts a lot with the USFL stuff on there. Mm-hmm. And I know he's going to be like, Nolan. And I'll be like, Yes, Nolan, but trust me, like it's okay. I, I, like I said, I, I th- I'm, I'm fascinated to see where this, this fully goes. Um, in terms of Mike Nolan, I do want the suit if he is comfortable with doing that because I think that was pretty cool back mm-hmm. at the time, and that would, social media wise, that bring some clicks. Yeah. Um, and I think, like I said, I want to see how he capitalizes on the defensive setup that Steve Kayser and company have started building up in terms of that roster because, you know, like I said, it. And I'll credit this, you know, Jake, Jake, Jake mentioned in our chat here and he's right. I knew we've known this too. Yes. Jeff Fisher was a defensive coach. That was his leaning. It's a specialty when he was a player. Um, that being said, you know, improvements were needed to be made. Um, so maybe another spin on, on that too. The real reason though, and I'll, I'll put this cause it feels like I'm caveat, like saying, oh, they let him, he, he let, was let go because of performance. No, mm-hmm. um, the press release and I'll, we'll go into this now because it's a good transition. Um, he, he was too, it was a hard decision. He said, but he stepped away for family reasons. Um, specifically he has five grandkids. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, you jump in and I think you realize, oh yeah, I want to want to be part of their lives and want to be focused on that. And I, and maybe he realized that he still can be part of coach. I, I think this is something I'll I, speculation on this, but mm-hmm. you know, he was at, he was coaching the NFL PA bowl yep. this, this, uh, during this last month, which he won. And he won against his former running back, uh, Eddie George. And I almost hypothesize that he's doing this and going, you know, it was a tough cycle last go around. Maybe this is the avenue I can do is these specialty coaching events where I can do like a one off. I still get my itch to kind of scratch for that. And I also still get my family time at the same time because the NFL PA Bowl does not have as I mean. A lot of the teams get formula, formalized and everything, and you sign up. But like events like that, you know, they're a few months. They're a few months work. They're one-off events. You go their separate ways. Mm-hmm. And I think he said in the past he wants to give back to the game in the way the USFL was doing it. Maybe this is the best compromise he gets, where he can still do stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But he also gets to focus on you know the back end of you know coming close to retirement. As I've been told by coaches in the past, you never truly retired for the most part. You still have that itch until until the day you go into the dirt. But, right. uh, you know, maybe this is the best avenue where he can still do what he loves, that he can't give up, but he gets to kind of act like a retired grandpa mm-hmm. <laughs> a little bit. 100%, 100%. So I have the press release up here. I figure let's go through some quotes. I'll, I'll start with uh, Moose here because he he's first up. So you always got to go with Moose first. Yeah, I mean, Moose, which, I mean, I got to mention it every show. He is... A sharp dressed man. That's a song, mm. right? Sharp dressed there, man. There's see now that's a man. If he if there's anyone that should encourage that that suit setup, I hope it's him. Moose, <laughs> if you're listening, which <laughs> I, I highly doubt you are, but if you are, tell him. Embrace the Please. suit. Embrace the suit. I would love it. But let's hear what good old Moose has to say. We are honored, honored to welcome Mike Nolan to the USFL family as the new head coach of the Michigan Panthers. When Coach Fisher informed us that he needed to step down, we immediately started the challenging process to find another experienced, charismatic leader to replace him while at the same time create excitement for Michigan Panthers players and fans as we open our Detroit hub to start USFL year two. Mike was the perfect fit for that role. He has coached for more than 30 years in the NFL. His extensive football knowledge and coaching experience will maximize his players' talents and help them succeed at the professional level. We couldn't have found a better fit for the Michigan Panthers and the USFL. See, Zach, I'm getting better at my quote reads. I don't know if if that's how Daryl said it, but that's how I read it. (laughs) You You do the best you can. You know, it's... You can't always... You can't always interpret the voice, but mm. you know you do the best you can. You know, you know, Daryl delivered it as his usual self, the the typical broadcaster's voice that he's got, uh, and all. And and I mean, you know, kudos to them because that's exactly 
in a scenario like this, I mean, you got to react quickly. It, again, I, we don't have full details on how recently this was made, but mm. you know, you hope that it was at least a little bit of time in between that they went, okay, we've got Mike Nolan locked and loaded. You know, he's a good solid choice in terms of experience to go into. So, mm -hmm. you know, you react where you can. Uh, it is the spirit of, you know, spring football <laughs> as it is and season two is, you know, it's that that's the deal. So yeah, mm -hmm. Daryl, you know, solid quote. Um, I do want to get in. Here's Mike's quote, by the mm -hmm. way, which I, I do like, cause again, he references kind of the, you know, his times coaching in Detroit again, dedicated fan bases he goes into. So here's Mike Nolan quote. I am very excited to join the USFL and the Michigan Panthers said Nolan playing great football and competing at a high level is what the Panthers are going to be about. I will take a loud and rabid fan base to help us get there. I've experienced the, the passionate fans of Michigan and Detroit while coaching against the Lions, and I was always impressed. Our goal with the Panthers is to play with energy and pride for the entire state we represent. I want our fans to be proud to root for the Panthers. And, I mean, look, when you're making a really a true first impression this season on the ground level, I mean, you made an impression last year by getting people to say, hey, the Panthers return. Now you are really mm -hmm. going, we're like back, back, as they've been doing. You know, we are back in our market. Mm -hmm. um, you know? Good attitude to start. And I and again, this man, he's been a defensive coordinator almost every, at least a, a fourth, of, almost a fourth of the league. He's mm -hmm. had a DC spot in at some point. Well, he in his served career. at what? Over 11, 11 different places. I think that's in the press release here. Yeah, somewhere. He, is, he is a plethora of. There we go. 11 different you know, NFL franchises, mostly on defense. Yes. Now, he's been a coordinator, and I'm going to count this up for you, for you all here. Um, he has had. Well, four or five. So, yeah. So he's had eight coordinator positions, um, all different teams, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, again, that is, that's half the league. That is a quarter of the league. He has had some sort of DC role in at some point, but you know, so dude knows his defense, you know, mm -hmm. people will say otherwise, but dude is a defensive coordinator by nature. So they, they, they need that. And he definitely has had some times to play in the, Detroit area. He knows, you know, it's a good 100%. crowd out there. Win or losing year, those people do show up and they are passionate about that team that they get to have on, you know, on that, on that shoreline. Yeah. I mean, I, I lived in Detroit for 25 years and so, and I'm almost 40 and I'm still watching the lions. I watch every lions game. It hurts me sometimes, Zach, and I still do it. So I think people will show up for the Panthers here. Uh, now, one thing, you know, with Nolan here, he this is something we've seen with the uh, some of the other USFL coaches, maybe not head coaches, but a good, good example is Jaron. He also comes from a coaching pedigree here. So his father, Dick Nolan, was also head coach of the 49ers, mm -hmm. interestingly yep. enough, as well as the Saints. Uh, and so here's what he had to say on that. As the son of a coach, I was blessed to be around the game and football players for all my life. I love the game, but more importantly, I love the relationships that are created when competing for a common goal. My staff and I look forward to getting to work and beginning the process to make the Panthers the top team in the USFL. Now, that's, those are some big words. Uh, but uh, again, this is what I talked about even before last season with spring football. It's the unknown. Anything can happen. The best teams from last year could be the worst teams this year, and the worst teams from last year could be the best this year. And so you look, we've already talked about the moves that the Maulers have been making. There's one thing you can say for sure. The Maulers are not going to be the same team as last year. I I no. would be amazed if they end up with the same amount of wins. I, they they got to get more than they did last year. I think they're going to be a lot more competitive. Uh, although that Canton's not necessarily truly their home stadium, I'd say it's more their home stadium than the generals, <laughs> right? Just from the proximity to Pittsburgh alone, mm -hmm. the Panthers now have an opportunity to do that. They have a new head coach coming in with the defensive mindset before the draft, which should be coming up soon. Hopefully when we have more details, we can give you details on live stream because we would like to do it. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know details should be coming out on that uh here as well it's it's not too much longer uh i'll i'll hint at this with mm -hmm. again i we're gonna have our conversation with uh tony paul from detroit news over the weekend um you know he he also said it as well like the draft is coming up later this month um de i mean details have to be getting close to release by the league it's been stated not only by you know him but there's been others that have hinted at it so it's around the corner mm -hmm. it's definitely happening they are working towards that 
Um, and it's going to be soon, mm-hmm. sure enough. So we'll be definitely covering it. And again, Mike Nolan, crucial draft for him. You know, Jeff Fisher at least gets to pass off a really good nod of having that first overall pick to him. That is something you have to be really happy. You get to have a feather in your cap mm-hmm. about that coming up. Right. A hundred percent. So do you want to read the quote from Mr. Fisher here? Sure thing. I, I most certainly will as yeah, like I said, it's hey, this is a uh, this is me being like uh, Woody here in Toy Story <laughs> Three. So long, partner. As I will put as I will put on this. Uh, here's the quote here from Jeff Fisher. Quote: Coaching the USFL has been an incredible experience, and I am a firm believe, believer the league has a tremendous future. I am extremely grateful to our players, coaches, and fans, and the excellent leadership at the USFL. Um, there's also a little bit more here that I have to add on here. Um, he also has said on this, on a quote in the PR, I have made the tough decision to step away from coaching in the USFL to spend more time with my family, including our five, gra- five grad babies, as again, grandbabies, mm-hmm. as we mentioned, um, and enjoy my semi-retirement to the fullest. That was the other sentence that was not mm-hmm. left on the original social media posting. Um, but again, it, it's about family for him. And that's why I hypothesize, again, that I think he's he saw something like the NFL PA Bowl, you know, like maybe see like the Reese Senior Bowl and other stuff like that. You know, other bowls or games that are more developmental angle that he can contribute, but he doesn't have to give as much of a full hardworking season. Because he mentioned, too, even in one of the lead up interviews to the PA Bowl, it was harder than he thought it was going to be last year to do this. So that is something you reevaluate, you know, as well. Larry Fedora, same same Mm -hmm. things he brought up in his own release, too. It's about family. It's Mm -hmm. about, you know, spending that time. You know, you have to consider that when you're doing this job. And I think that was the tough decision that both those gentlemen had to make. Yeah. Well, and you got to add into it too. It's not just, you know, last year, if it was difficult last year and there's no travel now there's, you know, you're moving up to Detroit, which is a little bit further from your home as it stands, but then you're going to be traveling in the mix. I remember, you know, Bruno Reagan, uh, you you know, he has his own radio show. That was one of the things he brought up last year before the season when people said, well, what do you think about the hub? He said, I love it. He said, if I could get paid to play football and never have to travel, that's the worst part. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, sign me up. So, you know, I, I assume that a little bit comes into it as well. You know, he, he, with with Birmingham right there, it's just a couple hours from where he was living. Now he's going to be in Detroit, but also flying around. So it's not just as easy as just making, you know, one little drive up to your to, uh, you know, where your family's at. So mm. it's unfortunate. But, you know, I'll say this. I'm glad that it happened now and not, you know, after the draft that I think really screws things well, up. Well, or right yeah. like mid season or during the season or anything like that at, uh, at the end of the day, the people that are going to look at this and think about this are what you and I and Seth lessons have called the crazies. That's me. That's you. <laughs> Those are the people that are like looking and soaking all of this in, in the off season. It, it, but when the season kicks off, there's going to be a lot of people that are still learning about the USFL for the first time. So they, you know, I mean, it, it, it's not going to have, I don't think as big of an impact as maybe some think it will, but again, I don't know if it will or won't. We'll have to see, but if he gives the Panthers a winning record, do you think anybody's going to care? Hell no. They're going to no, love no, this no, no, pick. No. They're going to no, no, say, no. I knew this pick was genius from the beginning. Let's get signed up on that. No, trust me. I, uh, if, if for example, I am seeing Eric Berrier holding the championship trophy in his hands, uh, what I who where I expect is Canton, Ohio again. Mm-hmm. Uh, then no, I'm I have no complaints. You kidding me? I I mean, no one can really complain about that type of shift. It's just right now in the moment, like I said, it it's less than 12 hours since this has happened as of mm-hmm. us jumping on. So, you know, still people just kind of reacting to it as the day's going on. But uh, thing is, it's going to it's at least stability that they get to get someone. I'm, I'm assuming part of it was, you know, the tough decision being a make or break moment where you have to decide. Mm-hmm. And here we are. So as, as Jake put it again, and this is similar timeline we've, we've heard across from all of us drafts in basically roughly two and a half weeks. So mm-hmm. uh, it is, it's going to be late February, late February. So buckle up buttercup. We're, we're about to see some new faces uh, line these rosters. So I have a conspiracy theory for you, Zach. I got, I got a real tinfoil hat one for you. So maybe these aren't as spontaneously, uh, these coaching changes aren't as spontaneous as we thought. With the last two coaching okay. changes, 
The USFL has officially snuffed out the two biggest negative memes about them. Oh pizza, which I won't mention what people call the pizza thing because there's another thing that that pizza uh, relates to that will surely get us demonetized if I mention pizza, pizza, what I'll, I'll, I'll call it pizza fence here. I'll call it pizza fence. Just leave it. Because if I leave it with the other one, I have a feeling we're going to get demonetized real quick. I'm I'm telling you on this show, you bail on that right now. Go to the next thing. (laughs) So then the next one, though, is the five and five, the 500 record. We've effectively snuffed out the two memes, the two bad memes. Now, okay, maybe we added in a little bit of a loose lip flip. I know I said I wouldn't say that anymore, but I had to throw it in there. You did that. You you created that yourself. (laughs) But now the Panthers are rolling for Nolan. I mean, let's go. Let's make it happen. I mean, I know that's more of a gambler's thing, maybe. But if he's rolling in some W's, then I I don't. I think people are going to be fully on board. Now, since we are talking about the topic of Michigan, Detroit, Michigan football, I think there's something that all Michigan football fans, whether they're Panthers fans, Lions fans, even not football fans, I assume probably Tigers and Red Wings fans feel the same. And really just everybody in in the NFC North other than one team embraces a little acronym FTP. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say what it means. I'm sure you can figure it out. It's about the Packers. The middle word is the. I'll let you do the rest. My wife, she tricked me. I don't know if you saw it on social media. She tricked me into going to a Packers bar, bar and grill. I don't really drink anymore, but we (laughs) went there and she knows the owner. That was the trick. She said, oh, my, one of my uh, friends opened up a new restaurant. Let's go check it out. I said, okay, great. What's it called? Now here's the trick. And I don't know. She says she didn't do this on purpose. She said, it's called Lambaz. I said, oh, Lambaz. Okay, whatever. And we get there. No, 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 no. It's called Lambos. Lambos, red and, uh, not red, green and yellow, everything. The the mistake was you should have left when you saw that. Oh, well, they didn't you, like me. You kept walking in. I told them, I said, I, 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 they probably spit in my food. I told them, I, I, I said, I'm surprised a Packers fan had enough money to start a restaurant. <laughs> I was making Packers jokes day and night, all left and right in there. Uh, so my, my wife, though, at the end of it, she says, you know, the food was OK. It just didn't have a lot of flavor. And I'm telling you, without skipping a beat, I said, yeah, that's because Packers fans have no taste. And I, <laughs> I was pretty proud of that one. I was pretty proud of that one. But anyway, you know, Lambos is actually not that bad. If you are a Packers fan and you live in Texas, Uh-oh. go check it out. But, you know, I had to razz them. God. Don't get the brat, though. The brat was disappointing. Maybe I just have high hopes for a brat at a football themed place. I'm like, Oh, you know, it's been a while since I had a brat. I'm not going to go get a brat at most places, but Hey, it's a football place. The guy that owns it, I'll tell you, he owns another bar LTs. That's pretty damn good. I actually like LTs. There you go. Okay. Lambos. It's okay. Yeah, I, but sorry, if you're a Packers like, fan, get signed up. Sorry. Like I said, as soon as I would pull up, I would basically be hitting the reverse and going anywhere. else. <laughs> I just told her, I said, if you told me I would have wore all my lions gear, I just find it funny that she called it Lambos and <laughs> she had no clue. She didn't know I don't what know. The I, hell it was it's funny. There's no, there's no awe in that whatsoever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give, just pull up i'm wife. like oh yeah, no tell your wife i said hi that's yeah. all i'm gonna say don't. my my greatest fear is coming true what is going on with me again <laughs> next oh my time, god i'll wear my uh, charlie batch jersey in there that'll show them. oh no <laughs> oh my god you have one of those it's the yeah. last piece of lions merchandise i bought zach i've talked about this on social media every now and then i refused this was a mistake i made uh, well i don't know a mistake or a blessing i don't know after, I don't know, the last piece of Lions merchandise I bought was a Charlie Batch jersey in the late 90s, right? And they disappointed me time and time and time again. So I said, I'm not going to buy another piece of Lions merch, anything, a cup, a cozy, a f- anything. Okay. Until they win a playoff game. <laughs> little did i know it's like almost two decades later <laughs> oops yeah well no not oops that's what they get if they want my card heart and i'll tell you it was difficult when they put out those dan campbell jerseys earlier this year but again screw them 
win a playoff game, and I'll buy. It's going to be like the the doors in The Shining, where the, the with the Man. yeah, it's just the breaking Man. loose. I'm going to have everything. I'm going to have a little. Man has a pennants. Charlie Batch jersey in his home. <laughs> I wear it for every game. It might be why they lose. <laughs> you maybe have to reevaluate your superstitions a little bit. I love that Charlie Batch jersey. It's my favorite thing. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> I don't know. And, and then, uh, then I had that thought of like, okay, if they like, because they, they actually had a chance of getting to the playoffs this year. And I was thinking, okay, well, if they win a playoff game, do I get the Dan Campbell or do I get the Jared Goff? Because I don't know. I feel, I felt uh, uh, at the beginning of the season, I said, uh, I don't know if Goff's the guy. I feel like Goff earned it. And I kind of like Goff as the Detroit guy, if anything, because nobody gave him a chance. Just mm-hmm. like nobody gave the Lions a chance. Nobody gives the Lions a chance. And so for I, if if we had the master trade, this could honestly could. If, if Jared Goff wins a championship in Detroit, I would have to say the Goff Stafford trade is probably the greatest trade in football. Because one, it'll account in two championships. Two championships. Okay. Stafford gets his ring. And but let's not ignore the fact that any trade that leads the Lions to a Super Bowl has to be considered among one of the top five trades in football history. I agree. I just keep in mind, I'm also slowing the brakes because I need to see the playoff (laughs) win. I think my neighbors are mad about that one. They're like banging oh, up. They're like, lions ain't going nowhere. I don't know what's going on outside. Oh, Jesus. Uh, oh, by, I, I love this comment in our in our chats here. You need to get the Among Us St. Brown jersey. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of Monroe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Clever, clever, clever. Never one of my game, favorite things from the season was Brandon Perna from That's Good Sports. He uh, Early in the season, he was doing the – Amen Ra to the tune of one of the Lady Gaga songs, the Ra 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 Ra. Oh gosh! That. But he would do it to the amount of of uh, receptions he was getting because he was getting like a ridiculous amount of receptions and touchdowns early in the season. But anyway, we're super off topic now. Yeah, I was gonna say my <laughs> my bringing bringing into kind of like I guess it's almost weird because that's that's really we brought Jem Dawn here for kind of final just remarks on this. Mm-hmm. Um, and might as well, we'll give a little more detail. So Sunday, um, mm. if you're wanting more content, we were, we were supposed to drop an interview today uh, with Tony Paul from the Detroit News, kind of given getting his thoughts on, you know, at least the Panthers coming to the market, um, kind of the early uh, article and pieces he's written about the Panthers, because he's been on top of that since the beginning. Um, that's being pushed back now to Sunday. Um, or if you watch it later, it's out now, but it, it'll be back. It'll be on Sunday, uh, February 5th. You'll get a chance to watch that interview. Um, and yeah, you'll get to check that out again. He also references the draft, which, you know, like I said, and we know it's, it's two and a half weeks away. Um, it's coming up, but you know, he was, he's been on this. If you want to hear a good, fascinating conversation and also, you know, I'll give you a little tease why he says that Detroit, that Detroit's comeback at least in the national eye is overrated there, but that I just, I'll leave that to you for that because mm. I thought that was a unique, unique thing. I asked that question. I got a unique answer. You might want to tune in for that set answer. So keep that all in mind, but yeah, pl- that plenty of other interviews in the pipeline. And, uh, I've been hinted at that. There might be stuff coming up here again soon. So, so you know, besides the draft, so that's all I'm going to leave it at. I don't mm-hmm. want to go any too farther into it to, uh, have some people going, Hey, what the hell are you doing? But, I will leave it at that for you all. Well, let me do this. Well, first, before we, I, I have a quick speculation zone. Okay. I, just because we're live and we have a chat and I want to speculate sure. with them. But before we jump into the speculation zone, I want everyone to drop a, an F in the chat for Fisher and family. We're going to make the F's a good thing. Fisher and family, drop your F's in the chat while you're dropping your F's in the chat. Speculation zone. Speculation zone. What the hell? Sign us up. Mm-hmm. Do you think we get schedules? before or after the draft because i think they're coming soon tough call um eh, i feel like mm, i'm stuck i'm gonna go that that implies that i would say that that the schedule's coming out in like two weeks time Mm -hmm. yes and i only i'm gonna say that because they have the hubs now and Mm -hmm. 
I think that they'll get it out earlier this year. So I'm going to be optimistic, but don't be surprised if it's after the draft as well, because I could totally see it being that way. It's before training camp. That is the best I'm going to put you in. They are going to get it out. I think this year they'll get it out this year before training camp. Uh, like, like did last, like they did kind of lag last season. Of course. I just think that it's more time. Give me. Yes. Mm-hmm. Give me yes. I want to see it. Uh, I don't know, but I think, yeah, hundred percent. I think we get it before training camp right now as it sits at the time that we're live right now, recording, whatever you want to call it. We're 71 days from kickoff, which is kind of crazy to even think about. We're only, I mean, two weeks from the XFL kickoff, which is pretty crazy too. If anybody's down mm-hmm. in Houston, come on down to the green lot. Cause the tailgate is the ref. I know how to party party pretty hard. (laughs) We're going to, we have an old like thirties fire truck. It's ridiculous. But speaking of parties week one, USFL spring stock, we'll give you details. One thing that we can talk about though, week three, the motor city meetup. So I think this is perfect timing to talk about it here. We're talking about a new head coach of the Panthers. We got the motor city meetup. The newsroom crew is going to be heading out there for, I would probably say the biggest tailgate of the spring. <laughs> I could say that, right? Because I don't know if sure. we're going to beat any yeah. of the Lions tailgates, but we're definitely going to be the biggest tailgate of the spring out there for the first game that Sunday, April 30th. So we'll, we'll be leaving some more details. Now we'll probably be on stream for a little bit, but we're not doing like a full spring stock. We'll probably, you know, jump on with the fans, get a lot of footage for our show and stuff like that. But Hey, if you want to get down with the tailgate, ping us over on, uh, on social media at USFL podcast, hit in the DMS. We're bringing all sorts of stuff. I know James Larson, Jake ball. It's like their birthday weekend. So we're yeah. going to be partying on that. And That's I'll tell true. you this, Zach, I don't know about you, but me personally, if the cards line up, let's say Canton plays in set on Saturday, I might head out to Canton on that Saturday. I don't know what we'll call that. Okay. The, the the come on down to Canton. I don't know. We'll figure out a, fe- a fancy name. That's what I was going to say. It's fancy, not name. any other F words. We'll figure out a fancy name, name for it. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. We'll have to see how the schedule plays out. Now, I hope, I hope, I hope it's sooner rather than later. Uh, I, I think I'm going to agree with you that, yeah, it'll probably be after the draft before training camp. But those things are going to be pretty close, right? Rosters are a little bit bigger this year. So I'm curious. I, I'm excited to see how everything shakes. I'm really excited to see what the draft looks like, right? Because, I mean, let's be honest here, Zach. We're seeing some pretty big si- free agent signings before we even get into the draft. We just saw Ruben Foster yep. jump on. We saw, I mean, we saw Shark Dog come back. We've we seen a lot of these guys returning. Stallions fans will be ha- happy because they got Shark Dog. You know, it hasn't been officially dropped, but Mar- James has confirmed Marlon Williams is going to be returning. So mm-hmm. you got to be thrilled to get that one back. Uh, I mean, Bailey Gaither's come come back in recent weeks. Uh, I mean, you you name it. They've it's um, seen a lot more guys showing up now, either returning or, like I said, big names like Foster. Foster, to me, I think is fascinating in the sense that he basically went on Twitter, said, Hey, should I consider joining the league? Gets told by a bunch of people, yes, you should consider joining the league. And then within a, I, think, I believe it was a week, he's signing on with the Maulers for right. this year. Like the power of social media, it does Let's, it works in mysterious ways. I love it, sometimes. man. I love it, dude. It, this is what I love about the internet. Anything can happen. I mean, anything can happen. Well, we just saw it with the AFL. It was just well, one little too. profile <laughs> picture change, and everybody's like, "Wait a minute, what the heck?" And boom, fast forward to yesterday. And Hey, we got a whole new league coming back. I mean, every year we got a new league coming back. It's sweet. I like it. Now we got arena (laughs) newsroom, get signed up. uh, Yeah. I'll tell you, I'm thrilled about that too. On the side. That's uh, love me some, love my arena football. Good God. Having the AFL back is uh, enticing. Three big leagues now. Yeah. playing in, in the spring. Keep that in mind. Well, and you know, I, I guess no. this is where it kind of does relate to the show. From what I understand, those AFL guys are going to be paying pretty competitively compared to, you know, the XFL and even the USFL. I know the USFL comes up a little bit above the you, XFL. You would I definitely believe. know yeah. uh, for without a doubt. He, he is the guy. He's the in guy right now. Well, I um, mean, you know, it is what it is. I, I just got the scoops. I'm like the Raisin brand guy. I got two scoops of scoops. I'm just... Scoops McGee over here, (laughs) five years in newsroom. That's all it takes. If you ever want to get, you know, into something, just spend five years hustling on it and anything can happen. Uh, I mean, 
just on that note, five years, holy crap, right? Like, yeah, that's kind of nuts. Still blows my mind. I did, you know, a couple streams last week just to kind of celebrate it. Here we are a week later doing another stream. I do want to make the streams more of a common occurrence because, well, it's fun. It's a great way. We get to actually hang out with the chat. Yeah, Ref Schefter, sign you up, Ducky. Yeah, I like Schefter. that one. Um, but the Discord of all the things that I've created in the last five years, we have the websites, we have the podcasts, we have the social media accounts. The one thing I never thought would actually just turn into something was the discord. That was, mm -hmm. I just set it up, right? I figured, okay, well, if we're going to have a podcast, we're going to have a site. We should have a discord. I mean, it's actually starting to build into a life of its own. We're at over 1100 people now. That's wild. It was, to me still. I remember it was like crazy. It, it, it didn't want to get over that thousand for like three months. And I think I remember telling you, you watch once it gets over the thousand, it's just going to, it's going to start going. And Hey, it did. So if you're not in the discord, make sure you click the link down below. We got roles where, I mean, we actually, it, it's actually turning into a respectable discord group, little it's, moderation, but <laughs> a respectable discord <laughs> group nonetheless. But here's what I'll say. Yes. Little moderation, but you know what we don't have? We don't have hooligans. We don't have schmas. We don't like, I would say we have shit posters, but we don't have trolls. <laughs> well, <laughs> You know. And that to me is a positive thing. Maybe I'm crazy. I don't know if there's much else to talk about, Zach. Last thoughts, last feelings before we head out into the sunset for an episode 45. I'm glad we went live for episode 45 too, by the way. Right? Yeah, no, I, I, it was needed. Like I said, emergency show was definitely required for this. It's a big deal and a surprise deal. Um, if anything, look, hey, I'm a, Pan I'm a Panthers fan for sure. And I'm, I'm excited either way. I, I'm behind my guy, Coach Nolan. Let's get at it. It's a, new, it's a new season, a new beginning for this team. And, uh, yeah, I see some bright things ahead no matter what. So uh, here we go. <laughs> big, another, big, another big news piece. Another coach changed out, but uh, someone with, good experience, with at least good NFL experience. And uh, away we go. Season two is around the corner. Time to book it, get it at, hit the gas is what I was trying to say. Ugh, we're getting hyped, hard. guys. See, this is what happens when we go live, even though it's not much different than when we pre record because we very, very, very rarely cut anything out of the show. Sometimes we even forget to cut it out of the show. <laughs> That's my bad. Oopsie. Uh, but hey, we went over the drill before, but here's one thing you can really do to hook us up here make sure you hit like on the video. If you're not subscribed, subscribe, click the bell it builds morale you may or may not need it heading into season two only 71 days away from kickoff 71 days wow. from spring stock 2023 tw 71 days until we see the first season two of a spring football league in nearly 40 years guys i'm getting excited i'm getting hyped sign sign you guys up thanks for joining us along the ride and until next time guys sign everybody up. Low self-esteem is like a virus. You catch it from other people. Low self-esteem is like a virus. You catch it from other people. You didn't get your low self-esteem necessarily because you were born with it. It's got to be a genetic component here. But mostly it comes from narcissists who have their own broken self-esteem and they want you to have a broken self-esteem and if you don't have it, they're going to give it to you. You catch it from other people and you can get rid of it. Just like you can get rid of it. Right? Low self-esteem is like a virus. Catch it from other people. Low self-esteem is like a virus. You catch it from other people.
from other people. You do have a constitution. You do have immunity. But it takes a little while, just like any cold. The cold wins for a while, and then your natural immunity takes over. Your natural immunity can get you away from this low self-esteem that you caught from other people. It's not in you. It's something you caught. And you're going to beat the shit out of it. Just like your uh, immune system will beat the shit out of it. 99% of you plus. Low self-esteem is like a virus. You catch it from other people.